This is a point that I don't want to belabor, but that I want to make. We see the Bible being used an awful lot during the Waukesha Christmas Parade trial. We see Gerald Brooks looking at it, holding it. We see it used to obstruct in more than one occasion. I don't know why it was on the table. I don't know why he was allowed to have it. I love the division between church and state. But was he really reading it? That is a question. How's it going, everyone? This is Christian Duke. Thanks for watching Everything Else Channel on YouTube, everythingelsechannel.com. If at any point in time you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment down below. And again, guys, please subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications. We are so close to hitting 1,000 subs. We are over 700, guys. Come on. This is so important. Show me that you like this content and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. With regards to the Bible. It's a great book. Whether you're religious or not, I feel that you can find inspiration in it. I feel you can find inspiration in other holy books like the Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita. But here's the deal, though. I don't believe Gerald Brooks is a believer. I, I know. Faith is subjective. And faith can happen at any point in time in one's life. I get that. And some will argue that how could someone that believed in God have committed the atrocious crime that he committed in Waukesha? But that aside, he had the Bible in front of him. Arguably was reading it every day. Arguably was reflecting on it. But yet, when he's got the book in front of him, he can't keep his eyes on it for more than four or five seconds. Now, it may only take four or five seconds to read any usual type sentence. But when you're reading a sentence, whether you're religious or not, in a book like the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, those are not just, you know, John went to the store, John bought a burger, Steve threw the ball. These are sentences that are very, very deep in intellectual thought, in inspiration, in biblical prophecy, you don't just, you don't pick up a holy book and read it cover to cover in an hour. People spend entire lives studying one chapter and there's dozens of them in a book or in the book. And so I don't believe he was actually reading or much less reflecting on anything in the Bible. I think the Bible was there as a prop. And I also think that he had the Bible because he figured that maybe there was a Christian in the jury. Maybe on some level, because I've heard Judge Zorro went to a Christian school, that that would have some sort of an impact. I don't know. I think he was doing a lot of things that would fall into the category of I don't know, but that lodged somewhere in the back of his head, he thought that maybe it would help him. Because there were many parts during the trial in which I honestly believe, I honestly believe that Darrell on some level, on some level thought that at the end of all of this, that he would be acquitted, exonerated, that he would be able to walk up in righteous indignation and look at his accusers and say, I was innocent and walk out the courtroom. The doors flinging open. Don and Dr. Mary, the roommate, and the dozens of people that he thought were going to come to testify on his behalf that never did. His music fans. Everybody was going to be out there waiting for Durrell. Uh, you know, and, and again, it, it, it sounds like I'm making a big joke. I'm not. If you watch the trial, you study his demeanor and the passion and the zeal with which he raised some of his objections. As unfounded and ridiculous as they were it makes you think that on some level, he honestly thought he'd walk out of there a free man, at least that there was a possibility of that. And so a lot of the things that would fall into the category of I don't know, like reading a Bible when he really wasn't reading it, may have contributed to that outcome. And he was working hard on that. 
He had the Bible in his hand several times. He made several references in his closing argument. He made several references during the presentation of his defense to the Bible, to his Christian upbringing, to God, even though to me, honestly, it fell all on deaf ears. I don't believe it. I didn't then. I don't now. I don't think I will in the future. Because one of the biggest things that Christianity teaches, and again, I'm no Bible scholar, is remorse. I think that that is a sentiment that we can see in a lot of different religions. Darrell had no remorse. None. I mean, I think there were even times during the trial where he said he wouldn't have changed anything. I mean, he had no remorse. Aside from that, he had no empathy. I mean, when you've got someone on the stand that has lost a loved one, or when you have someone on the stand who you have personally struck, hurt, and you show no remorse, no empathy, I mean, what can you say? What can you say about an individual like that? I, you know, but again, I wanted to share this very, very small clip. I don't even think it's 20 seconds long. But I think it says so much. It says a lot. So, and, and again, we see religion used. We see religion used a lot. You watch a lot of death row interviews when they're hoping for clemency, they're hoping the last minute appeal goes through. Religion is used again. You watch Ted Bundy's last interview in 1989. And it was with a religious-based interviewer, at least it seemed to me. But that interview was completely, completely religiously motivated. And it falls under the category of, I don't know, because I don't know what good it's going to do. But when you're in a situation such as Gerald Brooks Jr. or Ted Bundy looking at old Sparky. You employ a lot of, I don't know. Because I don't know is something. And something is better than nothing. So in any event, guys, I really truly believe that the Bible should not have been on that table. I don't know why it was. I don't know if that's common. I don't, I really don't. I know that in the Alex Murdoch trial, I believe his sister tried to pass him a John Grisham novel. The judge didn't like it. She got in a lot of trouble for that. I mean, maybe you could say, look, that's John Grisham. That's, that's a leisure reading. And he should have been paying attention to the trial. Well, I mean, the Bible is not leisure reading, I guess. It's, 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 uh, your faith, but, um, if Alex Murdoch, who was not representing himself, was to focus 100% on the trial, shouldn't Daryl Brooks Jr., who was actually representing himself, have paid 100% to the trial? So I, I just, I don't understand, but that's South Carolina, this was Wisconsin, that was that crime, that was this crime, different scenarios, different situations, but again, the Bible on there. And, and look, if he hadn't used the Bible, maybe he would have used the file. How many times did we see him, you know, flipping pages on various different files just as a way to drag out the process, just as a way to not answer questions, just as a way to give his absolute contempt and rejection for the authority of the court, a court who he to this day believes did not have subject matter jurisdiction. But again, the Bible to me was nothing but a prop. But I invite you to leave a comment down below if you opine accordingly with me or if you opine you know differently or you have something else to say or you just think the word opine is weird which it is in any event guys thank you very much for watching everything else channel on youtube once again guys please subscribe ring the bell for notifications we are so close to hitting that 1000 mark also please leave a comment down below your comments are gold and finally, if you like the video at any point in time, even right now, there's no better time to act than now, hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it very much. Christian Duke, Everything Else Channel on YouTube, EverythingElseChannel.com. Also, Sight Sounds Flavors on YouTube, SightSoundsFlavors.com. Thanks for watching.